Thank you very much for the introduction. Let's see. I propose we're facing some serious issues in the 21st century. And uh, no, I don't mean the election results from last night. <laughs> but do you know how much water you're wasting, and I'm using the term wasting in a loosely form, when you shave your legs while you're showering? Uh, would it surprise you if I tell you it's about eight gallons? And uh, these eight gallons could provide fresh drinking water for a child in Africa for about two days. The energy that we're using to heat up those six gallons uh, could provide electricity for a child in Africa for about uh, five days, roughly. So I'm here to talk about issues, issues related to energy, water, and waste, right? uh, creating a sustainable environment. There are other issues, we heard about sustainable food supply, right? but let's focus on those first. To live in the future, I propose that we need to generate our energy on site. So we can put solar panels on the roof, we can put a wind generator on the roof, uh, depending on uh, where you live. Uh, we can use geothermal heat to provide maybe heating and cooling uh, of your home. And uh, you can even uh, use uh, solar energy to create hot water for your home. To live in the future, I propose that we need to collect all of our water. So uh, we use that on site, we have appropriate collection mechanisms, we have appropriate sanitation mechanisms, and uh, we uh, uh, can use and store it. In the future, or to live in the future, I propose that uh, we recycle everything that we manufacture, meaning uh, the, uh, per, uh, the company that manufactures has to take all products back. We're using uh, maybe composting toilets. We're using uh, uh, anything uh, that's related to food waste locally for composting. So those are some uh, nice ideas. I think you would agree with me. So the question is, by when is this happening? Would it surprise you if I tell you that the future is today? Meet the Renew House. The Renew House stands for Retrofitted Net Zero Energy Water and Waste Home. It's a home that was built in 1928 and it's located just a little bit east of the McDonald's at the intersection of uh, Stadium and Northwestern uh, here on campus or close to campus. It's owned by the Purdue Research Foundation and we have leased it. We are currently in our fourth year with uh, uh, another four years to come. Uh, the floor plan says it has about uh, 2,800 feet uh, on a, uh, the basement floor, first floor, and three bedrooms on uh, the uh, second floor. We renovated this, as I mentioned, uh, by using only local resources and we have real occupancy. What I mean by that is uh, three of my graduate students are using this as a playground. Right? They're living there in the three bedrooms upstairs and they're using uh, the basement as a fully functional laboratory. And uh, we are fully instrumented with a monitoring system. I will talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Here are some uh, photos from the inside. You will see uh, we have a beautifully renovated inside kitchen, uh, open uh, labs, uh, kind of open space environment. We have an open living room. And we even have something that the industry called the bio wall. Uh, that means we're not using uh, chemical filtration systems to renew the air inside the house. We have the air going through the bio wall, uh, taking out VOCs, and using as a filter, and then uh, is conditioned, uh, either heated in the winter or cooled in the summer, and then returned to the space. So it provides what we call a very comfortable and a very personal living environment. Here's a 
photo of the building or the house when we uh, renovated it on the outside. We took all the paneling off and then we sprayed it with a very new uh, spray foam uh, with a very high insulation value that are those R values that are listed there. We also sprayed out the attic. We replaced all windows with triple pane windows uh, as well as uh, the doors with high insulation doors. Everything is very leak tight uh, to make it very high efficient to reduce our uh, heating uh, loads in the winter and our cooling loads uh, in the summer. After we did this, of course, we put the paneling back on. So uh, we want to be net zero energy. Right? So how do we that, uh, you, uh, to how do you get to net zero energy? You need uh, to produce energy. Right? We're doing this with solar panels on the roof. Uh, but as you easily know, uh, sun is not shining all day. Right? So you need storage. Uh, we are lucky we can use the grid as a storage. So uh, in the, during the day we have overproduction, which we're feeding into the grid. And then at night time, we're taking that electricity back off the grid uh, to, for uh, the needs inside the home. Uh, Duke Energy was nice enough. They gave us a great rate. We can sell them the electricity exactly at the rate that we're buying it back. So uh, that's uh, cost neutral for us. But we not only have uh, the uh, solar panels, the photovoltaic panels, we also have integrated warm water. So these panels are a brand new design. It has a PV and then the thermal components on the backside, where in the summertime we can heat up water almost to shower temperature, uh, not necessarily in the winter, but we can still produce warm water when the sun is shining in the winter. Uh, that water goes into these three storage tanks that you see on the bottom uh, left and uh, is, has a dual function. As I mentioned, we can use it for warm or hot water in the home, but we can also reverse the flow and in the winter time when it's snowing, we can heat up our panels and melt the snow off so we have electricity production in any kind of weather. Uh, we uh, have a ground source heat pump. Uh, that means uh, we have three boreholes that are about 280 feet deep vertically uh, to, uh, and in the winter we can pick up heat from there that is boosted with the heat pump to uh, provide the living, uh, comfortable living environment. In the summer uh, we are taking the heat from the house and putting it back into the ground. We also try to be net zero water. We put a metal roof on the house and we're collecting all water that goes into the, the downspouts and into large two storage tanks that are uh, uh, put into the ground that you see on the photo. Uh, from those storage tanks, uh, the water goes into the house through an extensive filtration system to prepare rainwater to drinking water quality. Uh, that water is used in all faucets as well as in the shower heads and from there it uh, goes actually back into the basement into a secondary preparation system. It's at this point called grey water. Uh, we're preparing the grey water one more time not to drinking water quality but to a quality that allows us to use it in the toilets and then after that it's actually discharged to the canalization of the city. Finally, I would like to mention we are fully instrumented, right? So we can, uh, uh, we can uh, measure temperatures and uh, uh, the humidity and airflow throughout the entire house. Uh, we can measure the electricity that we use at every outlet of every appliance in the house. Uh, we can use uh, the water use at every faucet, at every shower head, at every toilet of the house. Uh, I started out by asking uh, this woman uh, if she knows how many gallons of water she uses. Right? So let me go back. This is our shower study. Right? I can tell you exactly how much you use for the pre-wash, for face washing. I can tell you if uh, you should use shampoo and conditioner two in one because it takes less water than shampoo and conditioner separately. Right? Uh, so. Uh, I hope I showed you a little bit of the glimpse of what we're doing with the new new house and I hope that you can see that you can live already a very sustainable uh, today. Thank you very much.